Well, hello guys and welcome to a new video and today we are going to talk a bit about Arbitrum. Yes, we are here on the optimism page, but we will get into that in a few seconds. First of all, if you actually enjoy watching the video, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe because that helps out the channel quite a lot and also make sure to join the Discord to be up to date regarding cryptocurrency in general. And why are we on the optimism page? Well, that's actually fairly important simply because if you can see, there was again an OIA drop for Optimism users and this time it was based on you actually engaging on NFTs on the super chains which were Optimism Mainnet, Base and Zoa from the 10th of January 2023 until the 10th of January this year. Or you either could have created some NFTs on the Ethereum mainnet. There are some bonus criteria if you did create your first contract before January 1st and whatsoever. And why is that actually important? Well, because not a lot of people actually got this airdrop. You can see 10 million optimism got split amongst 22,000 addresses. And that's actually quite insane because 10 millions of token is a fair amount of money and why we are going to talk about Arbitrum is simply I was after the Arbitrum uh, after the Optimism airdrop I was a bit like hmm Arbitrum only did one airdrop so far and did a bit of grants for protocols that were early on Arbitrum but they still didn't actually do much and then I went to the treasury and we still see like what the actual yeah, it's quite a lot of money in the treasury and if you know, the Optimism treasury is a bit the same as Arbitrum treasury. They keep the tokens there, they are planning on doing airdrops with. And again, if you look at the tokenomics of Arbitrum back then, you see that most of the tokens were allocated for airdrops. And with Arbitrum actually being out for a good amount of time, I think it's actually fair to say we are going to receive the next Arbitrum airdrop fairly soon and again how can you pretty much participate in the airdrop itself well first of all use the Arbitrum network not only do transactions but also try to engage with NFTs even though NFTs is something that is a bit more tricky since you don't know if the NFTs are actually going up or down. But if you can get your hands on some cheap NFTs or you also want to provide some NFTs, just do it. Go ahead, mint some cheap NFTs and keep them in your wallet. And of course, also simply participate in the ecosystem itself. Optimism AirDrop once were rewarding people, if I'm not completely mistaken, on the gas fee spent on Optimism and Ethereum. So if you already did do a good amount of transaction during the whole time, uh, well, then most likely you will automatically be part of the airdrop simply because they always try to focus on users that provide value on the network. And also one thing that could play a factor is voting on proposals. Simply because proposals are actually quite important for protocols because that's the way of actually governing, uh, like govern the token pretty much. And you can simply stake your Arbitrum to be able to participate in the voting process. And if you don't know how to actually stake your Arbitrum, we're going to explore that also in today's video. And then you can come over here and start voting on those proposals, which very likely could give you a benefit of doing so. They either could say you need to at least uh, do it on one proposal or they could be after the first proposal you did, you get the bonus for, I don't know, four, eight and ten proposals. So you know that if you are active, pretty much you will be getting rewarded and again how you can stake the token is fairly simple go over onto Arbitrum Foundation and then you already will be greeted with delegate your token if you press onto it it will bring you on to Tally and Tally pretty much is a website where you can easily stake tokens and the thing is with staking does it actually play a factor which validator you are going to choose well somewhat i would say obviously 
aiming for the highest one is not a good idea but obviously aiming for the lowest one is also not a, not a good idea i will choose a protocol maybe even camelot for example which you are going to use anyway and then pretty much you will most likely be included in the next airdrop again how much can we actually expect from the airdrops well that's actually a lot of money if you ask me uh, that's six billion I'm not completely stupid and most of them are in arbitrum token as you can see 3.5 billion in arbitrum they still got on the treasury wallet and i think even if you only did a few transactions you will get a def uh, really good airdrop since the first airdrop for arbitrum also was really good and I myself only qualified on a few wallets for the base amount. Uh, I only got like, can't even remember how much that was, uh, but a few thousand tokens if I'm not completely mistaken. And that was some good money for actually not doing much. We only bridged a few times. We did a few transactions, but yeah, since then pretty much Arbitrum is the main network that I have been using since I like it the most. And most of my yield farming stuff is on Arbitrum. And again, regarding yield farming, if you provide liquidity, that's also always a good factor to count in towards airdrops in general. Because again, if you provide liquidity, you are pretty much the people that are supporting the network the most. Simply because without liquidity, trades would not be possible on the scale as they are possible already on Arbitrum. For example, if you would go ahead on Uniswap and you wanted to swap 10 ETH at a moment, you can do that without any trouble because of the liquidity they got but if a network is new for example and they don't have much liquidity yet they are definitely benefiting from people that are providing liquidity and again i think arbitrum is a bit more community based than starknet which starknet didn't even yeah count towards the lp people even if you for example provided 10,000 usd in liquidity for starknet and you did a good amount of transactions, you did bridge all the time, but you didn't have Ethereum in your wallet. Even if you had 10,000 USDC in your wallet, you wouldn't have got the airdrop. And that again is something which already told me to stay away from Starknet because I will not talk about Starknet anymore. On this channel, I will be focusing on projects that are actually providing value and that are legit counting the community's efforts for it and Arbitrum back then already did it and I think with the upcoming airdrops of them we definitely can see some sort of people getting rewarded that were there from the beginning and helped build Arbitrum to what it is at the moment one of the largest networks in my humble opinion with the best gas fees and the best yield farming opportunities but nevertheless that was pretty much it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed and let me know do you use Arbitrum at the moment already or did you never really bother with Arbitrum? Nevertheless, that was it. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.